Hello, welcome to Friday Night Trap Club TV. My name is Arj and I am your host. This channel is brought to you by Performance Physique, the coaching company who underpin everything with science. And I, Arj, am the owner. Now, this channel is all about track and field, athletics, speed, sports, lifestyle, a little bit of everything. And over the next few episodes, we're going to be bringing you interviews and discussions with some of the world's best coaches, some of the most interesting athletes, and you never know, we might even have a few special guests along the way. This first episode is filmed at Loughborough University following a workshop with two of the world's best speed coaches, Jonas Dodu and Les Spellman. The day was an action-packed day of learning, and I've got to say it was one of the best workshops I have ever been to, if not the best. Throughout my interview, I discussed some of the aspects of coaching science, as well as some more lighter topics. However, we did have a little technical issue that happens all the time with live interviews, where one of our microphones failed. This microphone, in fact. We do have our backup microphone which provides the sound. I'm really sorry that at times it can be a little bit difficult to hear because it was a little bit windy. But stay tuned, do carry on watching because there are some absolute gems of information brought to you by Jonas and Les throughout these 20 minutes. Hopefully we'll hook up with them in again in the future and see how their coaching has developed over that period of time. But for now, make sure you hit the subscribe button here, drop us a comment below, and also follow us on Instagram and Facebook, it's Performance Physique, or you can catch us on www.performancephysique.co.uk. Right, thanks for watching, make sure you tune in next time. Let's go. Jonas, thank you very, very much for today. No worries. Les, thank you very much. I've got to say, in all honesty, um, from going to workshops, CPD events over the last 15 years. It's very rare you leave an event and actually have so many practical things to be able to uh, um, apply straight away. Um, I'm good. like, I've got That's so good. much in my head from That's the practical. I'm like, <laughs> very good. I don't want to run it, write it down. I'm like, right, I'll get back into the car, I'm going to write everything down. But I, I really appreciate that. Um, those kind of events is what we, we need more of. Um, especially because it's like 15 years since I did my UK levels and stuff like that. So, Jonas, you're the most exciting coach in GB right now. Yeah, thank you. You are. Um, it was about 18 months ago. I came to the scene late in terms of hearing about you. 18 months ago, I'm having a curry with um, my friend Simon Hunt. Um, I was like, um, and he basically said, you need to go see this man Jonas. And I was like, I don't know who Jonas is. I said, go find him. I loved you on Twitter. <laughs> when's, when's, the, uh, when's the next workshop? Yeah. I'll be there and this is come up. So, from that, what do you feel is the most important kind of piece of advice you could give to new coaches and young coaches coming up? Most important advice. Take your time. Do a full review. Like I think it's very easy to get on the scene and um, be impressed by uh, a coach who's got an Olympic medalist or the coach who's coaching the person on the teams um, or the most recent coach on Instagram or whatever it is and that, those coaches probably have something to, that you can learn from but um, success leaves clues and, and, and so I think you're, you're better off going on power of 10 and saying okay who's been consistent over the past 10 years who um, who uh, which athletes maybe aren't in the top 10 but have improved from 11.5 to, to 10.5 or have come down from 12.9 to 12.1 and who's their coach and oh hold on he's coached another 20 people that have done the same thing you know, I think it's important to not get um, carried away by the glitz and glamour of being a Nike athlete or being a Nike coach or being at the Olympic Games although I'm saying you can learn from them but I, I think you can equally learn and maybe learn a bit more for your your, your novice level from other uh, coaches working with development athletes who are consistently creating faster people all the time. boys, girls, maybe even different event groups those guys will have philosophies and will have rules of farm characteristics you can learn a lot more from than someone maybe who's just got one athlete who's running very fast. Yeah, brilliant. Is, is that where you would kind of say the value of interning comes through then? I think interning um, definitely helps you to get a deep, a deep dive into a specific environment and philosophy. I think networking is where the value is. 
if you are up and coming or if you just want to learn no matter how long you've been in the game, it, it, it helps to come to events like this, um, where you can meet other coaches, where you can um, listen to the Q&A and recognise that someone else has got the same question as you. And maybe you could have a discussion with a, of a coach over coffee in between events and, and find out that um, maybe a, a 10 minute presentation that you've just listened to, that you took something completely opposite from someone yeah. else. Yeah, if I stand in front of you and I draw a W, I see a W, but you see an M. Yeah, so if you can network with enough people, because I see a W, you see an M, he sees an E, or maybe a three. Yeah, so if you can network with enough people, you can start to see the forest for the trees. You can start to really see and to really start to understand at a deeper level because you're sharing perspectives. So I think networking has always been, and throughout time, has been mentorship, um, internship, and networking has been. Uh, the most important thing for humans in general because then you can tell stories and that's how we learn. That's a brilliant answer, thank mm. you. Okay, just to flip your mic a little bit. Cool, so in terms of public interest in, in athletics, um, what do you see the, the future of athletics is? Is it the, the Nitro Athletics format or is it something else that you see? I think our sport is under is in trouble. Yeah. And um, I think the interest. I think the future is probably in smaller events and maybe not the nitro level. Maybe um, really competitive open meets. Okay. I think that at least as a sprint coach, yeah. who um, you know I had a long jump at Gish last week on Monday, um, and based at Love Road, they, they threw a javelin competition here the other day. You know, it's you know, two, three hours of of uh, attendance about a specific event group. I think that seems to be able to draw the crowds um, for uh, it's, it's almost like attention span for people that can be there for a limited amount of time, and enjoy the event, and go home. I think normal athletics you turn up at a, a British league at 9 a.m. and it runs all the way to 5 p.m. and there's no music and it's quite you know low energy. Um, and it's very, it's built around what it used to be 35 years ago when you could turn up to Southern League and it was like national camps. I wasn't involved in the sport then, but my wife talks about it a yeah. lot. Um, and she wasn't competing back then as well, so I that's a disclaimer. My wife should have told me off. But um, the, I think the reality is that um, the sport needs to uh, be attractive to a generation of people who have a low attention span, who are very, um, very much indoctrinated into a specific event group and I think you're going to get more sponsors um, that are aligned with an event group than you are sponsors that are aligned yeah. with uh, the whole athletic environment. That's interesting, that's really interesting. Just, just an idea. So that's what I'll go and test out in Birmingham and then, and then yep. Yep. bring exactly. you down. Cool. Um, Liz, you mentioned earlier on today um, about your unfortunate accident that happened when you were 17. Um, in terms of what you took away from that, what was the main thing that made you the man you are today from that yeah, particular incident? That's, that's a deep question. Yeah. Um, Hit you I'll, hard straight yeah, off. Yeah, <laughs> I think the main thing is just like, it's just there always, there's always a way. So I think my coaching brain kind of figured out from that, from that point that you could always find another method to do something. And um, I just got really creative and started trying to figure out like, okay, what, what, what do I really want to achieve? And how do I achieve it? Jonah said I started you know, going to people and learning from them and figuring out, taking a piece from them, taking a piece from them and just figuring out how can I help myself. And in the process of helping myself, I started to realize, okay, some of this knowledge can help other people. And um, that's when I was like, okay, I think I'm de destined to be a coach, not an athlete. That was that message you delivered right at the start, wasn't it, about helping other right. people is the fundamental. Yeah. So, do you think that has anything to do with the next question really where for someone so young, um, you know, I thought I was the youngest and I was like, I've got so much time and then, <laughs> and then you're younger than me and so far ahead. Do you, do you think that has something to do with the fact that you've worked with such an extensive group of athletes on such a wide scale already? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I feel like, I, feel like I, I was in the right place at the right time and learned from some of the, the best people out there. Um, I think me being 29 is just the only reason that that matters is that I grew up during a social media age yeah. where you could reach out to people. 
um, or you could watch things. Or there's podcasts that are for free on your phone. Um, you know, I, I put everybody I know on the Jonas podcast and onto you know Joel's podcast. And you could it's it's just free information. So our learning is, is just a lot faster, and we can reach out to people and, and figure out where they are and just show up and, and learn from them. So. I think there's a lot of coaches that are my age now that are learning rapidly, which is cool. Because when I was younger, coaching wasn't cool. And uh, I don't know when it became cool, but now it's, it's a cool, everyone wants to be yeah. a coach now. Um, but there's so much information out there for people to learn, and it's so easily available to everyone. So it's, it's kind of cool. That is cool to hear from. It, it's obviously, it does work on that social media thing, because I contacted both of you on social media yeah. to start the whole thing, thing off. <laughs> Um, so, question to both of you: most influential person or book for your coaching development? Per, my personal? Yeah. Dan Path is probably naturally influential the most. Still uh, does now. Yeah. Jonas and Dan Path, Ralph Mann. I don't know. It's got to be a combination of those three. Mm. So they all. It's yeah. It's it definitely. Is. So anyone who wants to get in coaching, go and find those three on Google and follow that pathway. Oh, sure. Can't go wrong. <laughs> can't, you can't go wrong there's artist coach education material like I, I had to go to Canada and then to California and to spend uh, uh, save up all summer to go and live on people's floors to be able to watch Dan and chase Dan and bother him and 10 years or 12 years down the line all of that information and more is, is uh, like fingertips on your phone yeah. Um, yeah. So <laughs> very true. Uh, there's, there's this point about you know, back in the days, and, and I'm 33, so I'm not so back 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 in the days. But it's very interesting how information. I'm um, like it, almost like James Wild. James yeah. Wild has a really good book mm -hmm. that really is a summary of what I spent six years doing and learning. And he just wrote a book three years ago or four years ago that summarizes all of that. And so now, as a 19 year old who maybe decides that I'm going to coach, and you can go and find that book and read that whereas it took me six years to go and find different people to grab, grab that information yeah so right now the excuse about the information there is no excuse all the information is at people's fingers yeah. Yeah. yeah so i, I said again the artists even i've signed on to artists 360 or onto their speeds <laughs> program and okay um, for a hundred dollars or a hundred pounds or whatever it is you, you can get some really top class information you can hear from the likes of Stu and dan and a lot of other people um, so that information is at your hands and then the knowledge uh, they do help you apply some of that into knowledge but yeah. what you've got to do what you can't do is you can never microwave experience so you can't ever speed it up you can read everything possible you still have to go have an athlete or have some athletes and go and do trial and error and make some mistakes um, so big influences are out there and the information is out there but I think you always come down to needing mentor mentee networking type of uh, environment so you can go and learn and then go and talk to someone who's done before. That's brilliant. Really good. You guys have said so many good analogies by the way over the, the day. I've, <laughs> I've written down these little quotes. You can't microwave experience yeah. come from Michael Afalaka. That's not Oh me. really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, stole, I, like I stole that one. Sure, right? <laughs> That's coaching though. You always have to figure out a way to get people to relate. To yeah. You. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's relatability. That's yeah, again, something you brought up in today. Um, in terms of specialization, then, because a lot of people talk about, you know, a lot of parent coaches basically turn up and be like, my kid's the fastest in the school, um, and I want them only to do sprinting right now. Do you have a perception that they need to get to a certain age before you say, right, you're going to specialize in this one sport? Um... Yeah, because you never know what they're going to do. You never know if they're going to have a growth spurt. You never know if they're going to become um, or are already risk takers. And, um, and risk takers are better off in events that need more risk, right? Like yeah. long jump, hurdling. You know, uh, I, I think um, in the States, they seem to do a better job than we do over here. Over here, if you're fast, people think you should run 100. Yeah. Whereas you've got to be fast to run uh, 800 meters. At a world class level, yeah, yeah, and you've yeah. got to have speed in your legs. You've got to be fast to do the hurdle. Yeah. Um, we think every fast person should run 100, just like every fast footballer thinks they should be a centre centre forward, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, so I, I think it uh, before the age of 14 or 15, it's very difficult to say you must be in this event. Um, uh, my my French 200 meter sprinter, he can high jump, he can high jump, he can high jump 195. Oh, really? So I think at the end of the day, and he's very coachable. Yeah. So if you want your your son or your child to be coachable, when 
they do decide to specialise, get them to specialise late yeah. and instead give them lots of opportunities to learn hand-eye, foot-eye, to learn um, how to stay orientated in space when they're upside down in the high jump or yeah. the pole vault, um, to learn how to deal with overcoming resistance and overcoming inertia. I think those are all important skill sets. We talk about strength and conditioning and physical development um, and that doesn't just happen in the circuits. Um, I think the multi-events route makes so much sense to me because once you finish learning how to rotate and apply force through the ground, through your hip and, and out of your hand, um, once you've learned that, all you've just learned how to do is, just, uh, is to control your spine and control your hips and apply force and, and how to use your rotational slings. So yes, you're learning to throw the shot put or the discus um, or you're just throwing med ball in circuits, but really what you're doing is, a, is, is developing physical qualities that are really important for sprinting yeah. at the end. So um, I think before 14 or 15, it's very difficult to su suggest that anyone specializes. I think as people start to do their GCSEs and start to think about A-levels and the pressures of school life and real life, puberty and social, social pressures, I think it does make sense just in life to start to focus on an event. I mean, all the LTAD models are out there yeah. to kind of suggest that. Yeah. Um, but it's kind of my spin on it. Like anything to add those right? yeah I mean in the states it's it's more of a business model for specialization so you look at kids that are specializing it's because their club teams want them there all year and they're paying you know three or four thousand dollars to be there all year and they just kind of want to monopolize the fact that they can get money from that kid all year mm -hmm. so we're seeing a lot of that and I think it's hurting kids I think it's hurting kids because when I grew up we would just go with the season you know summer we would just play outside Fall would come, we play with sport. Winter would come, we play sports. Spring yeah. would come, we play another sport. And we developed not only just like physical capabilities, but like cultural as well. So you're, you're getting you're getting a chance to meet people from all walks of life, you know. Yeah. And and that was the coolest part. We're not specialized looking at one thing and being around the same types of people. We had to relate to all different types of people. So we had to communicate to them. We had to you know work with them. We had to fight with them. And I think those were valuable skills. So you know, my little sister, she did um, volleyball, she did softball. She just won the state championship in high jump, but she just learned how to high jump last year. So, but she had so much, she had skills and she, yeah. she was so coachable and she had all the skills from playing volleyball and all the skills from playing softball. That when we went to high jump, she was like, oh, I wanna try that. She wins the state championship like that. So I think, I think athletes just kind of have to look at um, you know, where's the pressure to specialize coming from? Is it coming from your team sport coach? Or are you really the best in the world at what you do? And if you're not the best in the world at what you do, you should probably keep developing yeah. those skills in other sports, you know? Cool. For sure. Our, one of our youngest athletes, actually, Sophie, she basically said, um, what is the most single, the single most important an element or part, whatever, it can be physical, it can be um, psychological, that an athlete can take away and think about the single most thing. Failing forwards. Yeah. Yeah. That's a Will Smith phrase that I heard. Go yeah. fast forward. Yeah. 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 Um, and if you do a study of um, the most successful companies um, that grow quickly and and sustain that growth, what you notice is that they don't fail less than the other companies. They recognise their failures really early. They don't see those failures as a problem. There's, there's a lot of security, psychological security within the organization. Okay. If you can identify a failure really, really quickly, one of your own, and come up with a solution, then it's great. Whereas if you're in cultures where failing is, is your, your, your made out to be naughty or bad, or to be uh, literally a failure, um, then people tend to hide failure. Yeah. They, they tend to avoid it. They tend to not try to discuss it. And they don't bring it forward to other people to help them. And as a result, and then, then things are just rotting in the fridge. But if you recognize that something's gonna go off early in the fridge, you make a concoction and make it work. Yeah. And then you're not wasting food. But if you don't recognize it or you hide from it, then actually you just waste lots of food and actually it, it's contagious. Yeah. It comes worse and worse. Right. Yeah. So failing forward and looking at every everything that everything that happens as an opportunity to learn then great no matter what happens to you in, in sport or in life you'll always be looking on the bright side and you'll always be looking um, you'll always be progressing Brilliant. Mm -hmm. yeah same thing it's like I think we talked about social media how it's positive but it could also be negative and a lot of athletes think they should just walk into something and succeed the first time 
and they have this perception that they should be the best from the minute they start. So they're afraid to fail. And you see those athletes just not ever really make it past the level they're at. And the athletes that make it, they're making it because they don't really care what people think. And when people, when they fail, they, they're not really concerned with what the perception is of their failure. They're just trying to figure out how do I get better from it. Yeah. And um, you see those athletes all the time, that the guys that are, that are the best. It's, they've, they've gone through so many injuries. They've gone through so many different trials in their life that they're just unbothered. And they're just willing to do whatever it takes. And the more you can stay focused on the task and actually what outcome you're, you're trying to achieve, the more successful you're going to be. Sure. Yeah. In terms of um, strategy that you know you kind of touched on it already, Jonas, athletics meets are all day. Do you have particular recovery strategies for someone who's doing heats earlier on and then finals later that day? Um, it depends on the level and what they're really used to, but it's simple things like if you're there for the whole day, um, even though, and this is where my performance mindset might come against uh, uh, the social reason why you might do athletics, but often we've, we've had people that are just walking around all day, chatting to their friends, running around, joking around. Um, flirting and, just, and it's not it's not that you can't do these things but if you've got a heat at 10 and your finals at 4 and you're there for the whole day you probably need a, 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 a quiet space to go and lie down you might have a nap um, you need to be smart with when you con uh, consume sugar simple sugars um, and you, you need to have food ready some people just turn up and like now I'm hungry I'm going to go to the canteen I'm just going to have more teasers or I'm just going to have this so I think it's just being prepared. One, being prepared to be selfish. Two, being prepared with your fuel. Um, and three, being well planned for the day. And being aware of when, when it is you are meant to be wasted and, and when it's appropriate to take yourself away so you can actually have some mental recovery. Right. With the um, focus, we've got a quick fire round. With the focus of the day being around the NFL combine, thought we could start off and this will stay forever on our channel and our podcast it's calling this the 40 yard dash <laughs> so um, basically these questions are for both of you it's whatever comes to your head fastest yeah. okay. the 40 yard dash quick fire round so your go to music track to get you pumped up Nipsey Nipsey Hussle yeah. okay cool 100% oh uh, I don't know anything Nipsey <laughs> <laughs> and if you're Wu Tang fan. Wu Tang? Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, me right. there you go. Playing to, uh, this year, you know, in, in uh, Cornwall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Random Crazy, yeah. Because yeah. okay. yeah. I, I saw them, yeah. but like, they were on the uh, lineup. I thought, oh, I might go down. Um, sports hero growing up? Ali. Yeah. Join the Lone Man. Ah, I think I read that actually, yeah. Yeah. Your last supper, so you've got one meal left. My mum's jollof. <laughs> jollof rice. Yeah. Uh, Philly cheesesteak. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Beach life or city life? Beach. Oh my god, San Diego. Beach. Beach. <laughs> San Diego. <laughs> That's why I moved there. <laughs> I love it. And then yeah. finally, pastries or full English for breakfast? Full English, like sausages, eggs, everything. Uh, full English. Full English, yeah. full English no, no pork though. Okay. No pork cool. Pork. Cool. <laughs> cool. So basically, do you have any words? For the next generation if you could leave one message with them uh yeah i'll take it i think i think we talked about it there's so much information out there and it's, it's actually information overload and it's just finding out what's the best information to go to and that's that's through your mentor and you figure out what to study and it's all there and it's it's free which is amazing yeah. and uh, i feel late to the way to the game so i'm reading and studying every day and, know that there's probably some 15 or 16 year old out there right now that's studying everything that I'm studying and I'm like I, I need to hire that guy one day like, yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's yeah. my goal so I think there's so much out there just you have to find it you have to, you have to decipher it through uh, what you believe in and that's through your philosophy and you know it's just go for it brilliant yeah. mm, build a strong team okay build a strong team of people who are different not all the same as you, yeah. and who aren't afraid to tell you that your breath smells, or yeah, that yeah. it's bogey your yeah. nose. Yeah. Because those, those people, that's real friends, so that's a real supportive team that are able to tell you the tough thing, because not, not everyone will tell you the tough thing. Um, if someone cares about you enough, they'll tell you what really matters, even if it means 
Once again, guys, thank you ever so much for today. Yeah, I've really enjoyed it. Appreciate no it. Thank, thank you, you very much for your yeah. help as well. You're yeah, welcome. you're good. Thanks for watching. Now, Make yeah. sure you hit the subscribe button here, drop us a comment below, and also follow us on Instagram and Facebook. It's Performance Physique, or you can catch us on www.performancephysique.co.uk.